love this town. I love this town. I love this town. This, this town. Do you know what I love about this town? It's actually you. Everyone in it has got this massive soul. We're looking people. And that's what we care about. Hello everyone, welcome along to another episode of the Luton Town Supporters Trust podcast. I'm Kev, I've been invited down to the training ground to be joined by summer signing Jacob Brown. Jacob, thanks for giving up some of your time. Thanks for having me, it's nice to meet you. Uh, you're more than welcome. Um, we'll just keep Jacob on so you don't need to see me uh, for this one, he's the most important one here. And I guess really Jacob, I should start by saying congratulations, Scotland call up, not just a Scotland call up, but games away to Spain and away to France, they don't get much bigger than those. So you must be buzzing. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm buzzing to, to get called up. Obviously, I've been at the camp a few times now. Um, didn't get called up for the last camp. So I think for me, it was um, like I just wanted to work hard and try and get a chance to get called up again. So to be called up and then, like you said, for these two games, it's uh, exciting. The sort of regular, the listeners will kind of detect a Yorkshire accent rather than a Scottish one but I believe it's your mother that um, is Scottish so that's how you qualify for Scotland yeah that's right uh, my mum was born in Scotland so that's that's how I qualify excellent well it's good to see that um, you're getting international recognition once again and it could actually be a big camp as well couldn't it because Scotland could technically qualify for the Euros in that and I'm seeing saying this as a kind of jealous Englishman at the minute but uh, obviously if you can get a result away to Spain having beat them in the home game already that's Scotland qualified yeah uh, like I said we just um, obviously try and want to win every game but I think a point um, is enough so yeah we have that and then the friendly against France um, so yeah it's exciting and then obviously everyone's going to be working hard looking forward to it yeah two great games to look forward to and really wish you the best of luck there and I, I do genuinely mean that even though I'm an Englishman uh, hopefully obviously the two countries can go well uh, next summer as well but let's bring it back to sort of the more domestic um, things you started your career at Barnsley and you've kind of gone in the same sort of direction that Luton have gone obviously Barnsley got promoted from League One when you were playing and we obviously got promoted then as well then you went into the championship you stayed in the championship went to Stoke and now you're here with us in the Premier League at the first season that we're in the Premier League the journeys are very similar aren't they yeah definitely I think um, it's nice for me to have had a similar journey um, because obviously I've not been at the club since they've gone on that journey but I kind of know like how it feels for the fans obviously in my time at Barnsley I was on loan in League 2 as well at Chesterfield um, so to have played in League 2, League 1, the champ and now in the Premier League, it's nice and um, I feel like it's something that I can that share that journey like with the fans in a, in a different type of way. Um, so yeah, it's good. And obviously you're not the only one from that Barnsley League 1 squad that's here and, and indeed the championship one. Yeah, there's kind of a thing, isn't it? If you don't play for Barnsley, we can't sign you yeah. sort of thing. Um, but I guess it helped settling in, did it? Because you were kind of late in the summer, weren't you? It wasn't like you was here at the start of pre-season. So to have the likes of Mads already here, I guess that makes it easier, to, made it, sorry, easier to settle in. Yeah, definitely. I think when you go to a new club, if you, like, as soon as you know of interest at the club, you sort of look at who's there that you, you might know and, Obviously, I know Mads, um, Corley, and then I was with Alfie at Stoke. Um, but one thing I will say about this club, um, not just the players, but the staff, even the fans, like I felt welcome straight away. And that's not even without seeing Alfie, Corley and Mads. Like everyone made me feel really welcome. And it's hard to explain that I've never felt that um, at any other club that I've been at. Uh, it sort of takes a while to get settled. But I literally felt like from day one that I'd, I'd been here um, a while. So that, that was really helped settling in. Because I remember you signed sort of the week of the start of the season. So I was like, is he going to play at Brighton? Isn't he going to play at Brighton? And you were on the bench at Brighton and then you came on. Yeah. Had a massive impact in that game as well, winning us the penalty. Um, what was it like to sort of be on the Premier League team sheet for the first time? Uh, yeah, it, it was a crazy feeling. And I think it's probably helped me that it, it just all happened so quick. Um, I didn't really have time to think about it. Um, like you said, signing just before um, the first game of the season. Um, but yeah, like I say, looking back at the journey I've been on, the journey that the, the club's been on, um, I think it just means so much more. Um, like that you've you've worked your way up, and um, like after the game, I, I was speaking with my uh, my missus and just like reflecting on the journey, and it, it's something I'm really proud of. And obviously the result wasn't what we wanted at Brighton, but I mean the fans behind that goal were you know incredible. It was brilliant atmosphere. 
I don't like watching Luton and lose. You don't like losing. But just to be there, it was just like with the journey that we've been on and everything, it was just kind of dreams coming true sort of stuff, really. So I'm guessing that's exactly what it was like for you as a player. Yeah, exactly the same for me. And like you said, the way the fans, they've been like it every single game and I know they will be for, for the rest of the season. Um, but yeah, after the, the Brighton game, no one wants to lose, but it it seemed as if we'd won, like the way the fans the fans were. And I think just from that day, I knew that like we're going to have that 12th man for the whole season and it, it makes such a big difference. Um, but I know everyone says it, but the feeling like when you see the fans staying for so long after games, like the, the gaffer says all the time, how how much they really do like give us that that extra edge um, and it's really appreciated by all, all the players and stuff. I mean, you'd obviously known about the Luton fans before you arrived, hadn't you? As I say, you played against us for Barnsley, you played against us for Stoke a few times, you've played at Kenilworth Road as an opposition player, so you kind of know, and obviously that Luton-Stoke rivalry sort of escalated after Nathan left and became a Stoke manager and everything like that. So were you looking forward to having us as on your side? Yeah, 100%. Um, like you said, every time that I've um, come to the Kenny, the atmosphere is it's a lot different to um, other clubs and it, it, for the opposition, it can be quite uh, intimidating. Um, so now for that to be my, my home fans, it, it's a good feeling because um, it just makes you feel you've got more confidence like going into the game and you know that when teams come here, um, they're going to be feeling like feeling the pressure. I think whenever I watched you at Stoke and I, you kind of... Sometimes you played right through the middle. Other times you played on the right. And I think I saw you play on the left as well. Is there one that you prefer? Um, Don't worry, the boss won't. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm seeing if he's <laughs> poking through the door. Um, no, I think for me, um, I genuinely don't really mind where I play. I just, um, I like to have a, a clear, um, I need to know what my role is in the team. And then I think I can just um, like crack on with that. I think my time at Stoke, I played, I even played wing back a few times, left wing back, right wing back. I prefer playing like obviously an attacking role, but whether it's up front or on on the right, I don't really mind. I just want to be involved um, and then helping the team as much as I can. Has the Premier League surprised you? I mean, we're all football fans as well. I mean, obviously it's your job, but we're all fans, so we all watch the Premier League on television and everything else. But when you're actually immersed in it, has it actually surprised you just how big it is? Um, yeah, it's in terms of like just the scale of how big it is. Like, it's Probably not surprised me just because you like it's just obviously the, one of the biggest leagues in the world. Um, but then in terms of like the quality, I think from from the get go, really from the Brighton game, we saw like just how how different it is. You can't switch off at all. Um, you, if you get chances, you, you kind of have to take every chance you get because you're not getting as many chances in the games. Um, and then again, when when you do switch off, it most of the time it is punished. Um, so yeah, I think that's the the thing that you sort of expect, but you actually realise it 100% when, when you play. Yeah, that Brighton game was just, they were just crazy, weren't yeah. they? They were running all over the place. It was unbelievable. But what I like about this side is you tasted that defeat, but you've built with every single game. And I think each performance has improved. And obviously we've got closer to the results. And then we got the result last yeah. Saturday at Everton. So we're going in the right direction. Definitely. Um, like you said, the, I think the first few games it was sort of, not a wake-up call because we we knew what was coming, um, but we obviously coming into a new league it is going to be difficult. Um, but I feel like we're finding our feet now. Um, performances are, are, are going really well. Um, the confidence is really high in the group, even even when we are not getting the result we want. I think it's always important to sort of trust the process, and the we're getting a lot of chances. Um, obviously, we need to start taking them more, um, but we're getting the chances. We're giving teams less chances than we were at the start of the season. Um, and yeah, the confidence is really high and we know that we, we can get result against against all the teams, really. Yeah. Is it easy to keep confidence high? Because the one thing I've noticed about the Premier League is there's a load of nonsense spoken about it. And us in particular, I mean, we've been disrespected from here. Do you guys um, see any of that? Do you hear any of that? And is it easy to block all of that out? Because ultimately, you're living the dream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think for me personally, like I deleted Twitter a while ago because I just... I won't tag you in on this video. Yeah, then. yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, I have an account, but I, I don't use it just because I know a lot of like negative comments come up. And I think now even you can end up seeing comments without even like meaning to, do you know what I mean? It, they just come up. Um, but I think this group, we, 
we're definitely thriving off um obviously we've been being the underdogs um confidence is really high and i think it, it's just down to obviously the way that all the staff are the way the gaffer um comes across and um even again after bad results we always try and take the positives um and we know that we we can't really dwell on what's happened we've just got to move on to the next game um but yeah it's obviously it's never nice to have the the negative comments but we, we're just here to prove ourselves right because we we've earned the chance to play in this league and and obviously it'd be nice at the end of the season to prove everyone wrong yeah when we've stayed up at the end of the season don't worry i've got a list of all of the people that i need to reply to and uh... i'll i'll get twitter back for, <laughs> for the end of the season then and yeah, let everyone absolutely know. i will happily support you in uh, in doing all of that um it's not even like we're cut adrift at the bottom or anything. We're out of the relegation zone. You know, we're out of the relegation zone on merit. We have, apart from that first game, and even then they scored two late goals. We haven't taken a batter in. We've not done a, a no disrespect, but we've not done a Sheffield United against Newcastle or anything like that yet. And it's like, give us a break. Help. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're doing our best here. Yeah. Well, I think we just, just got to enjoy that everyone's talking about us really. Nice. Um, hopefully like when more of the results come, it'll start changing. Um, and people will be saying positive things, but I think us as, as a club, and like the fans know, we know what we're doing. Um, we're going to stick to that and we, we don't really need to worry about what, what anyone else is saying. It's kind of weird me interviewing you here because as a fan of Luton Town, having been where we've been in the conference and everything, I'm just enjoying this season. Yeah. Obviously, you're busting your gut to like get results and everything else. But, you know, whatever happens this season as a town fan, we're just going to enjoy it. It's just going to be brilliant. Uh, we're, we're loving watching you. Obviously, we're loving watching you guys come up against, you know, some of these big sides. We've, we've got the performances and now we got a um, point against Wolves. Obviously, we wanted the win. Then we got the win against Everton. Like the results are, are going to start coming now. Um, so, yeah, we just need to build on that and keep working yeah I agree the results are definitely going to come that first goal obviously you scored in the Carabao Cup which was a brilliant start to that game but that first Premier League goal is just proving elusive in the minute isn't it that header at Fulham oh yeah. so close the header the other night again as I say the smallest bloke on the pitch somehow managed to get it off I th actually thought it was in when you headed it and but it's coming yeah definitely I, I think one thing with me is um, like I take confidence getting in the positions if I'd like obviously came I started playing against all these teams and I, I can't even get on the ball or get shots away. Like I'd, I'd be starting to worry maybe. Um, but like I say, the, the header against Fulham was so close. Um, header again the other night. Uh, I mean, my first goal, my end up just coming off my, my arse or something. But as long as it, it comes and then I'm working hard to get it and hopefully it'll come soon. Yeah, we can see that you're, um, you're working hard. And I guess as a striker, the best thing about this club... Alfie from one side has got an absolute wand of a left peg and obviously Issa from the other side so you just got to kind of get yourself in them positions because those two have got the quality to find you more often than not. Yeah 100% um, like we were creating the chances which again is positive like you said about um, the lads the delivery is on point um, so yeah I know that if I keep getting in the positions the, the goals come in sooner or later. Yeah it definitely is as I say it is an avalanche of goals coming somewhere along the line I'm absolutely sure of it and I mean it's there's so many sort of fixtures that as fans we're looking forward to Liverpool Man United in the same week I mean I know you're a one game at a time people yeah. here within the club but it's just great to have these kind of sides coming to Kenworth Road and uh, to see you guys going up against them and not being outclassed or anything like that just giving them a right good go it's just brilliant to see and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing that right throughout the season really yeah yeah I think it's the same for the players like we're not going to lie and sit here and say we, we're not looking at all um, the games that are coming up because it's what we've been we've been working all our lives um, like to get in this position. But we obviously need to focus on each game as it comes. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, the, when the teams are coming to the Kenny, like it, it's going to be difficult for them no matter what team it is because it's it's such a, a, a good atmosphere for us, but obviously hostile for them. Um, so yeah, we we're, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing about this league is kickoff times are all over the place how does that work with you guys i mean body clocks must be all over the shop at the minute yeah it's difficult uh, to be fair i struggle sleeping after a night game and um, we've had like quite a few friday nights and then um, we had the tuesday because the, the game being postponed but yeah obviously last season was different it's usually just saturday tuesday um so i think we're getting used to it but yeah it could be you can literally play friday saturday sunday or monday or tuesday you can play any day really um, but yeah, we, obviously it's exciting time, so it's good. It seems we're playing every time apart from Saturday three yeah, o'clock, isn't it? The one time that it's traditional football time. Um, 
match of the day? Are you a watcher of it now that you're on, now that you're involved? Um, yeah, I have been watching it. Um, I feel like we're probably not getting no. um, much airtime or much um, positive things being said. But like I said, it's the same as what we were on about earlier with um, comments from other people. Our, our job at the end of the day is to, to get the results and that's going to start coming and then what, what other people say about us is, is up to them and yeah. That's yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? Once we start winning, you know, a few more games, they'll find someone else to talk about, won't yeah. they? It's, it's like that. They nearly caught me out on Saturday. I was late back from Everton on Saturday and we were bumped up the schedule, weren't we? I was expecting to walk in at half 11 or something and I'll see our highlights. I nearly missed it. But just that win at Everton, I mean, that win was coming. But how, what did it do to the dressing room just to get over the line, you know, just to have that one in the win column? Yeah, obviously the, it's the feeling when you get that first win. Um, it's good because obviously, you know, what, as much as we try not to listen to it, you know that people are saying things. Um, so to get that first win and shut everyone up about that is, is obviously a positive. But in terms of um, the confidence for the group, confidence was high anyway. But when you've gone away to Everton, which is a tough place to go to get a result the way we did it as well, um, like we went 2-0 up which was positive took a, a setback but then we didn't just let that um, affect us we, we held on and there was a lot of added time and we, we pushed through that and obviously you could see um, having that moment at the end with the fans and then seeing like the gaffer do the um, the fist bumps with everyone like it was good yeah just being in the away end was just a dream come true for that one um, yeah you mentioned uh, that we took that setback nearly made it so much easier for ourselves you just went just a fraction too soon for Carlton second, yeah yeah I know it was one of them because obviously with VAR now I, I, I didn't even bother trying to celebrate because I knew Did I was you? offside yeah I was kind of level with you yeah as well. I thought you'd gone a bit early whereas if it was last season I'd probably try to look at the line and be like no I was, I was on but you can't really, well yeah, you can't really get away with it with VAR. And how are you with that as a player then? Because if you know that goal is going to come, you're obviously going to want to celebrate big time. But then there's going to be a bit of trepidation that, oh no, they're going to find something to rule it out, sort of thing. Does that kind of take away the enjoyment of scoring as a player? Um, yeah, I feel like it kind of does because obviously when my um, when my first goal comes, I'm I'm going to be buzzing, and then you kind of. You don't want to do too much because it's like sort of the embarrassment as if it if it doesn't count, and then obviously you got the the away fans giving you a bit of stick and stuff like that. But um, yeah, as long as it comes and it it gets given, then that's just the main thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, have you got a celebration planned for it? Have you thought about it? I probably would think about doing a celebration, but I reckon when it comes, I'm going to be. I'm going to be that excited that I'll probably end up just running about going crazy. Well, don't do what Tom does because he always, whenever he scores, Tom Locker, he always knee slides <laughs> to the other fans. Yeah. We're like, go the other way because yeah. that's where the Luton fans are. The Luton fans were a bit <laughs> far away to be fair after his goal. But yeah, when he did the knee slide, I think there was, um, there was like four of us that ended up doing it. So yeah, it felt like I'd scored uh, when I did the knee slide. But no, it, it was a great feeling. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, and like you say, the celebrations at the end were absolutely fantastic. Are you someone that sets targets for yourself personally in a season? Um, no, I, I tend to just um, like more stick into my processes of um, like working hard in uh, in training and and trying to improve every day, and then I know that the, the results will come. Um, whereas I feel like if I if I end up setting targets and and I'm I'm not getting to it, I might sort of see it as a negative. Whereas if I know that if I'm doing all I can each day, then what what I um, deserve will come to me. Then do you feel that you're improving as a player at the club? Yeah, definitely. I think um, just the, obviously when I spoke to the gaffer before coming to the club, I just knew straight away that it, it was the right place for me. Like it's a, it's a great environment. Um, you've got everything you need here to, to succeed and um, I'm working hard in training and I feel like I am improving and um, definitely I think the confidence just makes you improve anywhere. And he's a great guy as well, isn't he? Not just a great coach, but a great person. I guess that kind of bonds the dressing room even further. Yeah, like you said, um, so when I had the, the first chat with the gaffer, it was on a Zoom call um, and just taking football aside, like you can see he's just such a, a good guy. And I think that's why the club is um, as it is, like everyone's so together, the fans, like all the staff and the players, um, because of the way he, he goes about his job. Um, and yeah, he, he obviously can't speak highly enough of him. Did you watch the playoff final at the end of last season? You'll have seen like all the celebrations and everything and obviously Rob was crying on TV yeah. with what's happened to Tom and everything. That kind of shows the compassion that he's got for everyone, really. Yeah, definitely. He's um he's not just a great manager, but he's he's a great guy as well. Um like he's a he's a good people person and um 
I think that's like this day and age is such a big thing. Um, and I think that's obviously going to help us massively um, across the season. Let's finish this podcast then by quickly looking ahead to what's to come for the rest of the season. Are there games that, as a football fan, that you can't wait to play in? I mean, obviously, as a fan myself, when we go to Old Trafford or Tottenham's away ground or whatever, they're the ones that you want to watch your team play at. But what about you as a player? Yeah, I'm um, obviously looking forward to all them big games. Um, so my dad, my dad's a Man United fan. So when we go to Old Trafford, um, he, he was, I was speaking to him the other day actually and he said, I can just feel that you, you're going to score against against him. Uh, he's wanting me to score, but uh, obviously he's a United fan, but going to Old Trafford would be good. Um, and then so my missus, like she's from Sheffield and all her family are either Wednesday or Sheffield United fans. Um, so obviously I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one as well, which is on Boxing Day, I think. Boxing so day, yeah, yeah, that should be... That should be a good game. Yeah, Boxing Day in Sheffield might be better for you than it will be for me, that's for sure. Yeah. But hey, as long as you score or we win, it's yeah. uh, all that matters. Yeah, I guess you've got every chance of scoring against Man United the way that they're defending uh, at the minute, haven't you? Let's, let's hope that that continues for a few more weeks, that's yeah. for sure. Um, the team, full belief in everyone that we're going to stay up this season, of course. The fans believe it. Players undoubtedly believe it. You're working hard to do that. Um is that just the goal or is there is there anything else that we're looking at over the course of the remainder of the season? Is it literally just do what we can to get to stay in this league? Yeah, I think the goal obviously is, is to stay in the league, but it's not we don't just want to like scrape. You don't if, want to win it, the last game. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. We wanna um we wanna show everyone that we we are good enough to play in this league. Um and again we want we've shown in the performances like we can we can do good things against really good teams. Um, so I think for us now, it's just making sure that when we deserve to win, that we actually come away from the game with three points. Um, and yeah, I think the the end goal is is to stay in the league and just keep building from that. Um, but we want to do it in a good way and a positive way. Have you allowed yourself to think what it'd be like staying up in this league after all of the negative stuff that's come our way? Yeah, well, that, that's that's all we're thinking about really. We we we're just um, trying to be positive each week. And again, like people are going to be doubting us, but. I think staying up at the end of the season would make that even more sweet because when everyone's against you, it's always nice at the end to prove people wrong. And does that end goal kind of make putting games behind us a little bit easier? Because that's the focus. You know, I mean, I'm, Tuesday was a sickener for everyone, wasn't it? But it, do we bed that and, and could, because the end goal was right there? Yeah, 100%. Obviously, Tuesday was a big game in terms of we just beat Everton. Going into a, another team that's obviously around us is... If we'd have got the win, it would have been amazing. But the, you can't go back and change some things. So we now need to go on to this game at the weekend. And then if we if we get three points after that, then we're looking back and saying, oh, that's a, it's a great week. Um, so I think, yeah, it's about sticking to the process, keeping the good performances up. And we know that the results will come with that. And you boys find it easy enough to treat every game as a as the same because obviously, you know, the wider world and maybe even as fans, we see it kind of like an eight team league down the bottom, don't they? There's a split in the Premier League, but that's not the case within the dressing room. Tottenham's every bit the same game as Burnley. Yeah, hundred um, percent. It doesn't matter who we're playing because at the end of the day, we're there's three points up for grabs. Um, so we will have the game plan. Um, obviously, all the staff are um, they spend so much time going through all that, and then it's our job as players to go out and and to perform the game plan as, as we've been asked to and, and give all on the pitch, um, whether it's against Burnley, Tottenham, like it doesn't matter who we're playing, we just want to try and get three points. Do you study opponents? Yeah, so obviously we have the, the wider um, team plan, but we also get sent um, the clips from our individual players that we're up against, so it's obviously up to you to, to do that research and, um, and give yourself the best chance of, of having a positive performance. Do you find that easy to do? Um, yeah, well, I think... Um, it's difficult because you can obviously we're watching clips of the um, the players against when they played against opposition, but it, they might not end up doing the same thing on on the daily game. Um, yeah, on the game day. So I suppose it's just doing as much as you can to prepare. But then when the game starts, like you just got to obviously have the confidence and and just give your all. Well, you're doing a great job of that. You're doing a great job this season. I've really enjoyed watching you. I'm glad that you've come to our club because you stand out at Stoke and you were becoming a pain in the ass because you always played well against us. So it's always good to have someone like that on our side. Keep up the good work. 
absolute full faith in you in that goal's coming it's coming soon in fact I'm going to stick you in my fantasy team soon because it's definitely coming soon and uh, yeah no doubt that you and the boys can lead us to safety at the end of the season Jacob it's been really good to chat to you all the best for the rest of the season all the best next week whilst you're away with Scotland uh, I do genuinely mean that I hope you beat Spain and France and uh, and that you stay in that squad and go to the Euros next summer hopefully preparing for a second uh, season of Premier League football with Luton Town it's been absolutely fantastic Top man. thanks that, again mate. thanks for that Thanks to Jacob for his time. Thanks to the guys here at the training ground for inviting us down and letting me have some time with Jacob. Um, and thanks to you for either watching or listening this episode of the Luton Town Supporters Trust. Until next time, come on, you atters. Actually, you, everyone in it has got these massive souls. We're looting people.